Good morning. We want to. Something on. There we go. We want to welcome you as we gather together to worship this uh, first Sunday of February. Where did January go? Right. Uh, hopefully, it went with it went the cold weather. Um, did it? Was everybody sufficiently cold this week? Oh my. Oh, um, we've got a number of announcements we'd like to make. First of all, two special announcements. First, Arnie, and then Joe. So come on up and share with us. Uh, this is just concerning the daycare. Uh, just some uh, incidences they'd like us to uh, acknowledge. So when the children, if you're coming into the church and the children in the hallway, it's okay to say hello to them, but don't start talking to them because then they forget what they're supposed to be doing, and it just makes it harder for the instructors. And the second portion, if you have to speak to any of the daycare staff, knock on the door, wait for the staff to come to the door, because it's against provincial regulations for anyone to be in the rooms with the children that aren't staff. So there's just uh, those little technicalities. It's a very regulated uh, industry. And so uh, if we can just do those things and make it easier for everyone. Thank you. Good morning. There we go. So this morning I handed out uh, flyers that say, Welcome to Welland Open House. It's uh, an event the Fresh Ideas Committee is putting on. If I know I missed some people on, on this side, and I will get them to you. So what we're doing is we're, we're just handing these out so you're aware of the event. And we're asking people that if you know someone that is new to Welland, please give them a flyer. and encourage them to come to this. We're going to have a variety of booths and we'll have some refreshments and we'll have tours of the church with hopefully someone who can tell us all about the history of the stained glass. If you have any questions, just come and see me at coffee time. Thank you, Joni and Arnie. Um, one thing we've learned with uh, the daycare is um, Contra, uh, with, in contrast to when we had early on for 25 years, much uh, stricter regulations with the daycare, much uh, like a very regulated um, industry. So we want to help them. Um, um, next week, everybody know what next week is? Have I trained you over these five years? It's Super Bowl Sunday the second most important religious holiday in the United States. No, in the United States. Uh, honestly, I really don't care who wins. <laughs> Bills are out. Uh, I will be rooting for the Eagles, but we, have, uh, we want to celebrate the fun. So I encourage you next week to wear a jersey. It doesn't have to be football can be baseball, can be hockey. I remember one year Marjorie and Don Goss came with their jerseys that, and they, they had, uh, I think, uh, pinned the front that said, yay, central. They were central jerseys. Um, so whatever, whatever you decide, please uh, get in the spirit of the Super Bowl, whether you watch the game or not, wear a jersey next week. We will also have a very special guest um, it, you know that old saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know? Well, this is certainly the case, because I would have never met this very delightful young man named Johnny Augustine, who's running back for um, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, two-time Grey Cup champion. Um, Johnny is one of our own. He grew up right here in Welland, uh, went to Notre Dame, then off to University of Guelph, and then has been playing for Winnipeg, I think, since he uh, graduated from university. The other connection, though, and under the it's not what you know, it's who you know, he considers Marnie Swayze his second mom. 
And that's who I met Johnny through. So uh, I know he's not doing it because I asked him. He's doing it because of Marnie. He's going to come and he's going to share a few words uh, regarding lessons learned um, from football. So that's, in, that's exciting. It'll be great to meet one of our own Wellen boys who has done so well. I wish the Thai Cats were smart enough to have picked him up when he was available last year, but alas, he is still with Winnipeg. So we look forward to that. Um, also, something that just I found out about just uh, a little bit ago that has warmed my heart. I, uh, I was under the assumption that insurance would cover all the damage that had been done in the sanctuary. It's, there's going to be a shortfall um, of probably somewhere around $10,000. Yeah, because, uh, because of the stained glass and um, a couple other things. So many people, when this first happened, contacted me and said, how can I help? And a lot of them were saying, can we come and help clean up? or something along those lines. Well, our, our Cracker Jack staff was, had it already, and, and volunteers already had it cleaned up. But now you can say, yes, there is. There's a way that you can help if you would like, very tangibly. But this is what warmed my heart. Um, Dave and um, Sue, thank you, and Aaron are involved in a, a choir that, um, that practices at St. Andrews United in Niagara Falls. Unbeknownst to me, or I think any of you, they found envelopes in their pews saying donations uh, for Central United. So they took it upon themselves to rally around us and support us, not knowing our need, but knowing what had happened. So um, I encourage you, if you so desire, if one of your relatives says, how can I help one of your friends, uh, please let them know they can send a check to the church, do, um, market donation for, um, for uh, sanctuary repair. Um, you can e-transfer the funds. Um, there's a number of ways you can give, but uh, if, if, they want it, if, if they ask, is there something I can do, that's what they can do. So we are very thankful, and we know God will supply our needs as he has promised. I believe those are all the announcements for this morning. And as This time it's not you. There we go. That's much better. Okay. Uh, we take a moment to light the candles of the colors of the Ukrainian flag. And we pray for peace. Oh God, again this week we hear on the news of um, long-range missiles and the support that many of the NATO countries are giving Ukraine. But we're sad that things are continuing, to, continuing especially in the East, to escalate. So we ask for, um, we ask for a miracle, because it will take a miracle to change hearts and minds for those who are the aggressors to put down their weapons of war, to say, enough, enough waste, enough bloodshed, enough destruction. Now is the time for peace. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's read responsively our call to worship. If the human body, body of blood and muscle, is to live, it needs salt. If 
If the earthly creation bustling and booming is to flourish, it needs the sun's light. Jesus says, we are the salt of the earth, light of the world. But if salt isn't salty, and if a light doesn't shine, Jesus says, we are the salt of the earth, light of the world, briny and bright. We are God's faithful people. Let's follow the choir and either look to the screen or follow in our hymnals as we sing together, Let There Be Light, number 679. Let's pray together. God of mystery and of mercy, who has made us to be salt and light in a tasteless, shadowed world, guide us in this time of worship. Grant us understanding and spiritual discernment so that others may see your good works through us. Give you the glory and be moved to serve you. Amen.
If you have any young or young at heart uh, who would like to join me up front, I think I see my friends Bill and Emma, and we have a new friend all the way from Korea named Eugenie. Boy. Hi, how are you guys? Did you have a good week? Yeah? Hi. This is Emma and Bill. They're very nice kids. Now, do you guys remember, did you, did you lose power over Christmas when we had that big storm? Did your lights go out at any point? Oh, you are so lucky. We went for 56 hours in Crystal Beach. Well, just for without, yeah, it was, it was okay during the day because you could read and you could, you know, see stuff. And, and, uh, but when it got cold at night, it was dark, and I mean dark. There weren't even street lights, nothing. So how do you think we saw? How do you think we saw things? Uh, we weren't constantly bumping into our furniture or walking into walls. Exactly, candles. Like the ones up there, not quite that fancy, but candles. They gave us light, and they gave us a little bit of heat, took the edge off. We had to make sure, you know, you know what cats are like? They like to walk and... Yeah, yeah, and they have no boundaries, so we were afraid their uh, their their tails were going to light on fire. But we we managed to keep them off. Now, the other thing that we're talking about with the adults, and we've already started talking about this. What's that? Salt. Exactly. You got it. It's salt. Now, you like salt? Yeah, I, I kind of do too, but. Now I have to take high blood pressure medication, so we don't use it too much. Do you guys like salt on your food? Yeah? You've never tried salt? Oh, very picky eater. Okay. I think next time you have a French fry, do you, do you ever have French fries? Uh, there you go. Okay, so if you've had French fries at McDonald's, you've had salt. <laughs> so, you know, salt is kind of a nice little mineral. And it's really called, do we know? Sodium chloride, NaCl. It was one of the first things we learned in school. It's uh, called sodium chloride, and it's an incredibly stable uh, compound. I learned that this week. And you know how the scripture talks about salt losing its saltiness? It really doesn't. Well, it can, but only if it leaches onto something else. But, you know, to look at the salt, and to think, hmm, that would taste good on my food. Yeah, what would we have to do? What would we have to do to enjoy that salt on our food? Exactly. Shake it off. Now, which, which shoulder do I throw it over for good luck? The left? Okay, there we go. Okay. The salt has to get out of the salt shaker for it to be useful, right? So, same with a candle has to be lit to give off light. We, as, as Christians, we need to get out into the world and meet people and do kind things and be a nice person in order to do any good. If, we're just, if we just stay in our little, little bottles, we really don't do much good for the world. So... I'm going to talk to the adults about that. I think Michelle's going to talk to you guys about that. But we're going to have a little prayer before you go, and uh, we'll learn a little bit more about what it means to be out of the salt shaker and be in salt and light in the world, okay? Okay. Oh, salt, yeah. I don't think you're going to eat salt, but I think there's going to be salt involved. So let's pray. Let's put our hands together and pray. Oh, God, thank you so much for Eugenie, for Emma, and for Bill. Thank you for that you have brought them here this morning. And thank you that you have called us to be salt and light. Wonderful things that brings flavor and heat and, and illumination. May we be those, uh, may we bring that to our schools and our neighborhoods and our homes. And we pray all that in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you guys follow Michelle.
I was going to lick it off my hand, but then I would have needed a wedge of lemon. And I just would have. <laughs> that went over a lot of your heads, didn't it? <laughs> You're such a pure and pious group. I love it. Uh, let's take a moment to uh, lift up um, the blessings and, uh, and challenges um, that we face. I just want to make a comment. Uh, this week we said goodbye to, uh, to Mary Lou Jervis. And many of you didn't get the opportunity to meet Mary Lou because they had moved to Lookout Ridge. She and Don had moved to Lookout Ridge uh, bef just actually just before I came. Um, what a beautiful celebration of life. Um, 67 years. I don't think I ever saw a picture of Mary Lou where she wasn't smiling. And uh, just a kind, hospitable, um, godly woman. And let's make sure we keep Dawn in our prayers as they walked life's path together for 65 years. And he is going to um, feel most profoundly um, the loss. So let's pray together. Oh God, we thank you for our church family, those who are sitting in the pews here, those who are watching at home, those who um, are around the world, not just, not just here in Canada, not just in North America, but around the world in places like Korea. We thank you, oh God, for the common bond in Christ that we share. And we thank you specifically for St. Andrews in Brantford um, as they are our church to pray for this week. We pray that in a, in a city, a small city, but has big city problems, we pray that you would make St. Andrews a place of welcome and inclusion. We want to also thank you for St. Andrews Niagara Falls and the kind and generous act that uh, they, have, um, they have done on our behalf uh, that we didn't even know about. Um, so we pray that you would bless them as they search for a minister. And um, we ask that you would help us to continue to be a blessing and to serve those around us. We want to lift up Dawn in our, in our prayers this morning. We know that um, he and Mary Lou had a wonderful marriage, 65 years, and they met in church. So we ask that you would comfort him, that his, uh, not only his family, but his friends, his church friends, would lift him up during these times, whether it be in prayer, a phone call, a visit, and he would know that while the love of his life has gone to be with you, he is still very loved. We pray for the Randall family and the loss that they've um, experienced. Eleanor and um, Jack's granddaughter's husband in a tragic car accident. We pray that you would bring them comfort as this young man has died so tragically. We want to lift up others who are facing um, and have begun treatments, um, are waiting for dates for surgeries, are standing beside those who are um, going through a difficult time, whether it be physical healing or mental healing or emotional healing. We pray for um, those on our list. We ask that you would bless each and every one and give each and every one what they need so that they might find peace in their souls. Oh God, we pray for, as the Prime Minister and the First Ministers get together, I think it's this week, to talk about health care, that mental health would be a big part of that conversation. And that not only funding, but a good strategy and a comprehensive strategy for those who, su who are suffering this um, unseen illness, these unseen illnesses, that they would get the help they need. Oh God, help us to be compassionate and kind and advocates for what is needed in our communities. We thank you for the city of Welland and for the abundance really in which we share, we have. We thank you for organizations like the Help Center and Open Arms Mission as they seek to provide food security for those who have more month than money. We pray for the Harvest Kitchen program as 
or whatever it's called, but the most important thing is that people's needs are being met. And we thank you for all those who are involved citywide. We lift up our joys, the joys of new family members, of engagements being announced, of the promise of spring. And just as quickly as January went, so will February, and we're right around the corner to springtime. Warm our hearts during these months as we wait and we look to the rebirth that only you can bring. Thank you, O oh God, for all your blessings in life and this prayer as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's sing, this, let's, uh, yeah, let's look to the, the screen and, listen, and follow the choir as we sing together, Take My Life. Let's pray together. Oh God, we thank you for all the gifts that you give us. And we know that in order for salt to be useful, it's got to get out of the salt shaker. We know the same is true for our offerings, for money to be used to further your kingdom, to bring people to know who you are and know your grace and your love. Our dollars need to get out of our wallet. So we thank you for the blessing of these um, offerings, and we pray that we would be good stewards and use them to further your kingdom here in Welland and around the world. Amen. Our readings this morning are from Psalm 112, verses 1 to 10, and Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 20. 
Praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his commands. Their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses, and their righteousness endures forever. Even in darkness, light dawns for the upright, for those who are gracious and compassionate and righteous. Good will come to those who are generous and lend freely, who conduct their affairs with justice. Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their hearts are secure. They will have no fear. In the end, they will look in triumph on their foes. They have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their horn will be lifted high in honor. The wicked will see and be vexed. They will gnash their teeth and waste away. And from the book of Matthew, the New International Version. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the pro- or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, Not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Holy wisdom, holy word. In 1979, the year I graduated from grade 13, boy, it seems like a long time ago, It was. Uh, A book by Rebecca Pippert was published called Out of the Salt Shaker and Into the World. Does anybody other than me remember that? I think I'm alone in this crowd. It was a call mostly to more conservative and evangelical churches that they needed to be out of their comfort zone and into the communities if they were to have any real impact on their world. It was a call to relevance and had some practical tips on how to achieve it. It was a bestseller, and I know I owned at least one copy through the years. In many ways, it was similar to Pierre Burton's 1965 book, The Comfortable Pew. Does anybody remember that one? Okay, we got a few more hands. The Comfortable Pew was more of a critique of the church's diminishing influence in Canada's culture. The two books had very similar messages. They were written for different audiences, but both prophetic in their own way. Jesus, in his Sermon on the Mount, calls us to be salt and light in the world. But what does that mean for us here in 2023? Because it was a little different in the late 70s, and it was a little different in 1965. In the 19th century, before radar was invented, ships avoided each other by looking out for beacons or lights on other ships. And they communicated with, uh, with each other by flash, flashing messages to each other by light in a sort of Morse code. 
One day, a Royal Naval battleship was out on maneuvers, and the captain of the battleship saw a beacon on the horizon. He realized that his ship was on a collis collision course with it. Um, so he called the signaler and told him, flash the following signal over there. We are on a collision course. Advise you change course 20 degrees. The reply came back, advise you to change course 20 degrees. The captain signaled back, who do you think you are telling the captain in a Royal Navy what to, in the Royal Navy what to do? The response came back, I'm a seaman second class. You better change your course 20 degrees. By this time, the captain was furious. He signaled back, I'm a battleship. I have no intention of changing direction. Change course 20 degrees. The reply, the reply came back, I'm a lighthouse. Be my guest. <laughs> we as the church need to be more like that lighthouse. In this morning's gospel, Jesus uses two metaphors to describe the effect that, the, that his church, that's all of us, should have on the world. He talks of salt, which has a twofold action. Salt is used to slow down the decaying of meat, and it's also used to bring about the taste of a meat, the meat as well. The light is used to illuminate darkness. And as Christians, Jesus calls us to be different. It's interesting how expressions from the Bible have entered our regular common day language. For example, a person who's a really nice and kind individual is described as the salt of the earth. And I know I've used that, especially in funerals. If we have special talents and gifts that we don't use, we speak of not hiding your light under a bushel. These are attributes that even our culture sees as good and positive. So let's look a little closer at things and what Jesus meant. The metaphor of salt. You are the salt of the earth. Salt was used for flavoring and preserving food. It was also used by the Jews to symbolize wisdom. So what exactly are you supposed to be doing by being the salt of the earth? Both flavoring and preserving have the effect of improving the society in which we live. And though if we seek to improve society by simply being true children of God, you see, true Christianity can change the life of a local community. In 1904, when the Welsh revival broke out and many miners came to faith in Christ, the pit ponies, little horses, used in the Welsh mines had to be retrained. Any ideas why? Uh, no, it's because once the miners became Christians, their language changed and they stopped swearing at the ponies. Whole new, whole new language they had to learn. If we are true servants of God, we shall automatically be true servants of our community by acting in their best interests. The love for God inevitably shows itself as love of our fellow human beings. However, like salt, we can only do this by being present and mixed mixed in with the food. As followers of Christ, we are to function in society as an alternative and challenge the community. That is beautifully and tragically illustrated in a marvelous little story tucked away in the pages of Edward Gibbon's seven-volume work, The Decline and Fall of Rome, the Roman Empire. It tells of a humble little monk named Talmachus living out in the farming regi regions of Asia. Talmachus had no great ambitions in life. He loved his little garden and tilled it through the changing seasons. But one day in the year 391, he felt a sense of urgency, a call of God's direction in his life. He didn't know why. He felt that God wanted him to go to Rome, the heart and soul of the empire. When he finally got to the city, it was in an uproar. The armies of Rome had just come home 
from the battlefield in victory, and the crowds were turning out for a great celebration. They flowed through the streets like a tidal wave, and Telmachus was caught up in their frenzy and carried into the Colosseum. He had never seen a gladiator contest before, but now his heart was sickened. Down in the arena, men hacked at each other with swords and clubs. The crowds roared at the sight of blood and urged their favorites on to the death. Telmachus couldn't stand it. He knew it was wrong. This wasn't the way God wanted people to live or to die. So little Telmachus worked his way through the crowds to, to the wall by the arena. In the name of Christ, forbear, he shouted. Nobody heard him. So he crawled up onto the wall and shouted again, In the name of Christ, forbear. This time, the few who heard him only laughed at him. But Telmachus was not to be ignored. He jumped into the arena, ran through the sands towards the gladiator. In the name of Christ, forbear. The crowds laughed at the silly little man and threw stones at him. Telmachus, however, was on a mission, and he threw himself between two gladiators to stop their fighting. In the name of Christ, forbear, he cried. They hacked him apart. They cut his body from shoulder to stomach, and he fell into the sand with the blood running out of his life. The gladiators were stunned and stopped to watch him die. Then the crowds fell back in silence, and for a moment... No one in the Colosseum moved. Telmachus' fin final words rang in their memories. In the name of Christ, forbear. At last they moved, slowly at first, but growing in numbers. The masses of Rome filed out of the Colosseum that day, and the historian Th uh, Theodoret writes, that a decree came from the emperor at the time, Honorius, that never again was a gladiator contest held in the Colosseum, all because of the witness and the testimony of a single Christian. You are the light of the world. Jesus probably had his hometown of Nazareth in mind when he used that expression. It was a city on a hill, and it stood out from the surrounding countryside. Nobody could miss it. I remember driving into Las Vegas um, for the first time. I'm not a gambler. I'm way too cheap. But my mother loved aspects of it. So I took her there um, after my dad died, and we drove up from Phoenix from my cousin's place. And you're in the desert, and there's not a lot to see and it's dark, and all of a sudden you go over this hill and poof, it hits you like, it hits you like the flu hit me this week. It was just a mass of light, and there it was. Well, welcome to fabulous Las Vegas. Well, Jerusalem in Jesus' day was kind of the same. It was up on the hill. To be the light of the world is a clear message to the disciples. They are to be like a city on a hill. They are not to be hidden, but clearly visible. No underground religion, no keeping it to ourselves. We, do, we are to do good deeds, and we are to do them visibly. This doesn't mean that this has to be done with, hey, look at me, aren't I terrific? Look what I just did. That's not the point. It does mean, that we have to do good works, not to score brownie points with God or impress others, but as a result of God's love for us and understanding of how blessed that we are. Paul sums it up well in Ephesians 2 when he says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Those opportunities we have to give to someone, to buy a lunch, to donate to Harvest Kitchen, Open Arms Mission. John Stott, the late rector emeritus of All Souls Langham Place, 
once said when he was visiting the United States, and he was a Brit, you know what your own country is like. I'm a visitor, and I wouldn't presume, presume to speak about America, but I know what Britain's like. I know something about the growing dishonesty, corruption, immorality, violence, the diminishing respect for human life. Whose fault is it? Let me put it like this. If the house is dark at night, there's no sense in blaming the house. What happens when, that's what happens when the sun goes down. The question to ask is, where is the light? If meat goes bad, there's no sense in blaming the meat. That's what happens when the bacteria are allowed to breed unchecked. The question to ask is, where is the salt? Where is the preservative? If safety becomes, sorry, if society becomes corrupt like a dark night or a stinking fish, there's no sense in blaming society. That's what happens when fallen human society is left to itself and human evil is unrestrained and unchecked. The question is, the question is uh, that we must ask is, where is the church? Pierre Burton told us to get off our backsides and out of our comfortable pews. Re Rebecca Pippert told us how essential it was for the salt to get out of the salt shaker. Now more than ever, we need to heed that call. It's time to once again be the salt of the earth and be the light of the world. And we do so for Jesus' sake. Amen. Let's follow the choir as we um, sing our closing song for more voices, Are You a Shepherd? Just a reminder, following the service, you're welcome to join us in the fellowship hall for a time of uh, fellowship and coffee. And now receive this blessing. May our love be like salt that makes life tasty and worthwhile. May our Christian living be a light to those who live in darkness. 
May our Christian communities be cities of light to be seen from afar as sign that God lives and works in his people. And may God bless you all for this mission, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now and let the light of Christ shine on those who live around you. Thanks be to God. Amen.